So we ready? He's not on yet. He's on. Oh, oh now he's on. Where? There he is. The person without a car? Okay. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, everyone. And good afternoon. I am Natalie Hall, Economic Hello. Development Specialist with the SBA North Florida District Office located here in Jacksonville. And welcome to the 2023 African American Black History Month event. Today, day one is going to be the resources that's available for you for those interested in starting and growing a business. And you are going to hear from those resources, including the outside SBA resource that can assist you as well. But before we dive in, I want to introduce you to Janelle Hine, the district director for the SBA North Florida District Office. Take it away, Janelle. Thank you very much, Natalie. Um, I appreciate it. Um, thank you all for joining um, and um, helping us to celebrate um, everything that um, our African-American businesses do to help our nation's economy. Um, I actually have the distinct pleasure of introducing our regional administrator, um, Mr. Alan Thomas. Um, he has been with the agency, is it all already a year, Alan? Close to? Oh my goodness, year and a half. Year and a half um, now. Okay, great. So um, he a, actually oversees um, the eight southeast states, um, and uh, which encompasses nine different district offices. And he oversees um, the uh, implementation of our programs and operations in the southeast. Um, he is a former three-term mayor, businessman, entrepreneur, one of your own, uh, and a leader in public and private enterprise. As a, the mayor of Greenville, one of North Carolina's largest cities, um, Allen led the post-recession recovery, rapid expansion, and robust economic growth, better connecting the city and the region. He was recognized by the White House during the Obama-Biden administration for community engagement in law enforcement and public safety. As a serial entrepreneur, Mr. Thomas co-founded healthcare technology startup IQMax, which grew to serve 160 medical facilities in 36 different states, processing 18 million patient records per day. Allen was appointed executive director of North Carolina Global Trans Park by the governor of North Carolina, Roy Cooper, to revitalize the state's global multimodal transportation and logistics hub, spearheading growth in advanced manufacturing jobs, innovation and investment. So Allen, please take it away. Wow, that's a lot. That's way too much, Janelle. <laughs> I do do appreciate the kind words, and uh, I'm excited to be with you guys. The only thing that would be better is if I could be in North Florida myself in person. And uh, as, as Janelle know, knows, ever since I stepped into this role, um, I've told her my office is at about 35,000 feet uh, flying, you know, trying to get to different states and trying to do what I can because you guys know that um, – Man, quite a time we had with COVID, but nothing made me more excited than to get back out in the field and and to start to uh, move this mission forward. So first of all, thank you, Janelle. It's a gr great afternoon to be with you guys. I'm honored and excited to be on the call and the chance to witness the future of small business ownership here in Florida. And I want to thank the North Florida District Office uh, for inviting me to speak today. I also like to thank Natalie Hall and Rosalind Bryant for your hard work putting these wonderful, wonderful webinars together. Webinars make a difference. I've launched businesses based on what I've learned on the business side in my entrepreneurial experience through these two great webinars and specifically with SBA. And I'm sure there'll be a lot of great content that will be covered today uh, in, the, in the next two days. Actually, it's going to be phenomenal uh, in your growth and your progress uh, in business. So just in Florida alone, there are 384,000 businesses owned by black businessmen and, and business women. And those businesses are creating jobs all across the state of Florida, fueling the economy. And as the Southeast uh, Regional Administrator for the SBA, it's my responsibility, along with Janelle and our other team, to make sure that entrepreneurs like you have the tools that are necessary to continue to grow for many years to come. And our partners, our lenders, our district office staff, we are here to help you with that mission as well. So what does the SBA do? Many of you may know this, some may not. The SBA offers access to capital, uh, co contracting opportunities, uh, access to counseling on how to launch a business, uh, how to deal with this, this uh, disaster recovery for small businesses. That's something that we do directly with SBA. We, along with your resource and community partners, have a vested interest in your 
success. And almost every business, as I mentioned earlier, as we all know, were impacted uh, by the pandemic over the past couple of years. And I'm sure some of you, like I did, had to pivot to change your business model. Um, back when the pandemic hit, I was the executive vice president of a jet company. Uh, and we had 480 employees and we had 80 jets spread across uh, across the globe that were parked uh, and no one knew what was going to happen next. And what did we do? We reached out to SBA and our other partners. I was tasked with that responsibility. It's a big reason why I'm here with SBA now. We never had to lay anyone off. And it's a really good success story. That company hit the ground running and has over 800 employees now and continues to grow. So I've lived it. I know the experience and I've uh, held the hands of folks who really struggled through this, but we all have had to pivot and make those changes. So I hope that the things that you learned today uh, in the webinar will help continue that pivot for you as what the economy looks like for the rest of 2023, 24, 25, and going forward. And you're not alone in this process. That's what this is all about. Uh, there are many resources at the federal, state, and local level, and we're all here to assist you in every state uh, of your business growth. And with that said, I want to mention a couple of things about the Biden-Harris administration in particular. Uh, this administration, which I'm proud to work with, and uh, you know, I work with everybody. Um, uh, this is a hammer and nail organization. We're here to make you successful, and as an entrepreneur, they help make me be successful. We are passionate about expanding access to SBA resources in our underserved communities which quite frankly have been looked over and not counted for far too long. We want to meet entrepreneurs, as our administrator Isabel Guzman says, meet our entrepreneurs where they are. Uh, and one of the ways we're doing that is I was just on the phone a little bit late actually getting on this call with some of you may know of the Divine Nine, the National Panhellenic Council. Uh, when I was a three-term mayor, I would not have been a mayor uh, without the tremendous engagement and involvement and the leadership by a number of the fraternities and sororities that I work with very closely to get elected and then make things happen across our community. But once I came on board as a regional administrator, I reached out to President Chris Ray, who's president of Phi Beta Sigma, and we wonder why there was never a coalition and agreement between uh, the NPHC, which is the National Panhellenic Council, representing over 2.5 million members of all the uh, historically black fraternities and sororities, uh, why there wasn't a close working relationship. So that's what we did last year, last summer. We launched a strategic agreement between the organizations. And I'm excited to say here in North Florida, you know, you're one of the leaders here, you know, Hyde and her team, uh, that we are really excited to launch this year, this spring, uh, all about, uh, we're going to do workshops and clinics, all about how to get access to capital and grow your business and launch a business. All the elements that we're going to touch on today, they're going to have a uh, a multi-year long strategy working with the MPHC to create growth, not just among the membership, but among your circle across the entire country. So that's uh, one of so many things we're working and being intentional and measurable. And we're going to apply analytics to this to see what programs people gravitate to, and what success is happening out there and how that is measured to make sure we're, we're moving forward. So SBA is also uh, leveraging the expanded footprint that, we, footprint that we grew with the American Rescue Plan and also the infrastructure, bipartisan infrastructure bill many of you may be familiar with, which is the largest infusion in investment since World War II in infrastructure growth. So what does that mean for you? Even if you've never done business with the, with the federal government, it means a massive opportunity for government contracting. And we're here to help you learn all about that and walk you through that. Uh, we want to ensure that you have access to capital, uh, to revenue opportunities that helps you help us all better reach our markets and underserved communities. And also a big thing we're doing is what we, we're doubling down with American Rescue Plan with the technical assistance grants uh, and high growth startups through technology grants and growth accelerators. And we are increasing a specialized program uh, around women development in business and minorities, veterans, uh, native entrepreneurs and micro enterprise access to capital. Not everyone needs five million or $10 million. Some people may need a thousand dollars, five thousand, whatever it takes to to be that that impetus, to, to be that catalyst to get rolling. So you have great resources in Florida. I'm I'm proud to say, including our great district office staff. You met Janelle Hine. We'll be getting morning in this conversation here shortly. The small business development centers are so special in the state of Florida. What a difference maker! When I launched my company IQ Max back in the late '90s, uh, I walked into SBDC in North Carolina with an idea and a plan. And uh, that turned into a business that was in 100 and uh, I guess over 150 
different medical facilities in about 36 states, which we sold in 2018. So I've lived it, y'all. I've lived it firsthand. So we want to connect you with our SBDCs, with our team, with our SCORE chapters of retired executives there to help you and offer their expertise. Our women's business centers, our veterans business outreach centers, all here and all will be on who will talk about these today. So use these resources and network as much as you can and grow your business. And that's what these organizations are all about to provide free, your taxpayers dollars pay for it, free technical assistance uh, and low cost training opportunities. And you can use one or more of these services as much as you need and as often as you need. So let's also consider this. Um, have you looked at exporting or e-commerce or even selling to the government as we mentioned before? These are all resources that we can tag you into. And this is the first big step for many of you in that path. So if you are currently selling to the government or thinking about it, then consider adding some of the credentials that will help you uh, put in place. Let's talk about the 8A certification that's available to socially and economically disadvantaged individuals. Uh, something you have a nine year long uh, uh, period where you're able to go out and potentially have sole source government contracting opportunities. How about that? How about certifications with the hub zone areas that if you hire employees within a certain area, you get all kinds of uh, benefits uh, from that. Uh, women owns and veterans, service disabled and veteran certifications. All of these certifications are valuable additional tools that you can use to compete for contracts with the world's largest customer. That is the U.S. government. In 2021, small businesses in the state of Florida alone were awarded over $3.2 billion just last year in federal contracts, small businesses. Now, you know, the, all the government businesses across the board, 650 billion, I think last year, but over 23% of that has to go to small business, has to go to whether it's prime or subs that are in the small business category, which you guys are. So let's just take advantage of the opportunity as we can. So if you're not quite ready to sell to the government yet, but hope to get there and work with our SBA uh, district offices and our resource partners, now is the time to have those conversations. It's a tremendous opportunity that you'll never see again in our lifetime, especially with the bipartisan infrastructure bill that's put trillions in opportunities out here across the country. So lastly, I hope you will join us again for tomorrow's webinar. After you finish today, tomorrow will be on lending resources for small businesses. And even if you, do, you don't think you need a loan at this time, I still recommend you take part in this training so that you're aware of the processes and can be prepared in advance. And whether it's time to open your first business or expand into a new location and scale your business or to recover from a natural disaster, you never know when you're gonna need access to crucial capital and those resources for your business. So let's help you get ahead on that. So as an entrepreneur myself, an active entrepreneur, I know that it takes a lot to get from concept uh, to success. And as they say, small business, it may sound glamorous, but we all know that it's a lot of hard work. It's a lot of time and effort, a lot of energy and a lot of cooperation by a lot of people, but you can do it. And the SBA is here to help you be successful in your ventures. So to that end, I want to make sure you know that I, along with the SBA team in the Southeast region and here in Florida, we are here for you. And again, my name is Alan Thomas. I am the regional director here in the Southeast United States. Feel free to contact me directly if I can assist you in any way. My email address is Alan.Thomas at SBA.gov. And I'll say that again, Alan, which is A-L-L-E-N dot Thomas at SBA.gov. And I can, if I can ever help you in any way, just put in the header, hey, I'm contacting you, small business in Florida, and let me know what I can do to assist. So if there's anything we can do, we're here for you. So thank you. Thank you for being here today and allow me to be a part of this awesome webinar. And I look forward to celebrating your success into the coming year. So I'll turn this back over to Natalie and, and Janelle and the team. Thank you guys and have a great session. And I'll talk to you those that return again tomorrow. I'll be back with you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, Alan, for sharing those great opening remarks and sharing that great information about the Small Business Administration on what we have to offer to those that is looking to start or grow a small business. So now we're gonna dive into the key um, resources that's available to you. So first, we're gonna hear from Score Jacksonville. We're also going to hear from the Veterans Business Outreach Center. Followed by that, we will hear from the Small Business Development Center. And then we're going to hear from a resource called Wealth Watchers Inc. Okay. They all will provide key information on how their programs and services can assist you that's looking to either start or grow a business 
or if it's just information you wanted to hear, we're glad you're here today. So with that, with that being said, I want to turn it over to Derek Smith with SCORE Jacksonville. Take it away, Derek. Okay, thank you, Natalie. Uh, just hold on just a moment. And share the screen. Hmm. All right, well, and I know we have a couple of individuals that called in, so this might be your opportunity to grab something to write with, so that way you can take down some of the information that will be delivered. And for um, those of you, again, I just wanted to share that this event is being recorded, so that way we're able to turn around and provide this recording to those individuals that reach out to us to say, hey, I would like a recording of the event. So again, for those that are on the phone, please grab something to write with just in case you want to take some notes or write down some key information that's going to be given to you during the course of this presentation. Natalie, can you see me? Yes, I can see you. OK. Enough, and, if, and if you're enough. having an issue pulling up your presentation, Derek, you might just want to just go ahead and just wing it without the slide. Yeah, I think so. I think okay. so. Okay. I think so. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Let me just kill that in a minute. Oh, oh my God. What the hell? Are you, are you hearing me? Yes. Okay. All right. I apologize for the technical issues. That's why we have dress rehearsals, I suppose. But it's a pleasure to be part of this. Um, it's a pleasure to be part of this program this afternoon. Uh, SCORE is very, very proud to be one of the resource partners that is in uh, North Florida to be able to help out people that are interested in going into a small business or already operating a small business. And as regional uh, director Thomas was saying, there are so many businesses that would qualify here in Florida for assistance. It's, it's really exciting. So what I think you'll hear from all of the resource providers today is how we complement one another and as opposed to try to compete. One of the things I took a look at is if you look just at Jacksonville, there are about uh, back in 2017, uh, the U.S. Census Bureau said there were about 3,000 minority owned businesses. And these businesses include everything from entertainment, fitness, food, drink, self self care, beauty and grooming, technology. And so, you know, since that time, you would expect that number to have only grown. And each of those businesses have very, very unique needs. Well, here at SCORE, uh, we're the nation's largest uh, organization, nonprofit organization with over 11,000 volunteers nationwide to help small businesses. And our focus is to help you get started or to grow your business and ultimately achieve your goals through education and mentorship. We're partially funded by the U.S. Small Business Administration, uh, and here in Jacksonville, we have a very, very strong chapter in which we have uh, over 60 volunteers, and we continue to grow, and we're involved in client education, community outreach, mentoring, and of course, continuing to recruit, recruit other volunteers. And we have volunteers that have backgrounds that range from finance, legal, accounting, sales and marketing, human resources, just about any discipline you can think of. And what we try to do is to match those volunteers up as best we can with the needs of our clients that come in to use our services. So what sort of support do we provide? Well, we give uh, guidance uh, to your particular needs. In some cases, I like to think that SCORE volunteers are like sounding boards. We're not here to judge the um, whether it's a good idea or a bad idea. It's more the case of, well, if this is the type of business you wanna pursue, or this is the type of opportunity you wanna take advantage of with your business, here are some things you may wanna think about. And our volunteers are trained to offer that type of assistance and advice. Sometimes it's helping uh, to get someone to a go or no go decision. Um, again, reflecting on the comments of Regional Director Thomas, uh, you know, it's uh, for anybody interested in going into small business, it's not for the faint of heart. So 
there are some very substantial issues that can arise, whether it's money, whether it's resources, the availability of being able to secure contracts, whatever the case may be. So helping someone get to that go or no go decision. We offer workshops, which many of those we've been doing recently as webinars and also from time to time conferences. But one of the main things we do is free one on one mentoring. I want to repeat that free one on one mentoring. And we do that both uh, virtually and we have started again now doing some in person as well. We provide ongoing coaching for existing businesses. Uh, so we have quite a few clients who have been working with us for a period of time through their initial startup phase. And now they're trying to progress their business. So offering them assistance in some manner is what we do. And then, of course, you know, the key to putting together a, a, a successful small business is to have a business plan. We do offer assistance in terms of how to put together a business plan. We also have templates that we make available to assist. Now, we don't write the business plan because we really think that that's the responsibility of you, the business owner, because you're the one who's going to be the, the individual benefiting by it. But certainly in terms of being able to offer whatever assistance we can or whatever resources or, you know, trying to give you some feedback, <coughs> excuse me, on what you wrote is one of the things that we do. Now, our impact in Jacksonville has been pretty substantial for um, last year. We had over uh, almost 2,200 mentoring sessions. Uh, we had our workshop attendance was almost 5,400. And we offered total services to just shy of 9,000 people. And this year, we're, we're continuing that growth in both our mentoring and our webinars. So we'd like to, you know, we want to continue to make sure that we're adding value. And we're trying to, again, recruit more and more volunteers to meet that ever-increasing demand. Now, the role of a, school, a SCORE mentor is to provide, again, the free business advice and education to any aspiring entrepreneur or an existing business owner. We help clients solve problems. We make their businesses more efficient, or at least making recommendations to make their businesses more efficient, and also assist with developing long-term business plans. Now, you, as a SCORE client, uh, have the ability of self-scheduling for an in-person or virtual appointment through our website, and I'll give you the information on how to reach our website here in just a moment. What are some of the common questions that a client might I ask when entered? Uh, when being mentored? Well, for example, how can I get help writing a business plan? Where can I apply for funding, such as loans or grants? What is the right formal structure for my business? Uh, is it an LLC, a limited liability company, or is it a C corporation or an S corporation or a partnership? <coughs> Excuse me, we do provide information so that you can make uh, an informed decision about what is the appropriate structure. How can I get more customers? That's a very, very common question. How can I grow my business? And what permits or licenses does my uh, business require? This is just a small sample of the range of questions that we get, and our volunteers have the expertise or the ability to direct you to the appropriate resource. So you can go to our website at www.jacksonville.score.org, jacksonville.score.org, to either register for either one of our workshops or to schedule an appointment with one of our mentors, as well as to access information. As I said a few minutes ago, we've got uh, a lot of templates and articles and blogs, things that you can download for free, uh, and hopefully we'll be able to address any question that you have, but we certainly invite you in because we'd love to have the opportunity to spend time to talk to you. Uh, I'll also give you our phone number. Uh, we can be reached at area code 904-443-1911. Again, that's area code 904-443-1911. Or you can email us at contactus at score.org. That's contactus at score.org. So once again, uh, I'm Derek Smith, chapter chair for Score Jacksonville, a uh, pleasure being part of the program today and look forward uh, to being of some assistance to you in the future. Thank you, Derek. Again, that is Derek Smith um, from Score Jacksonville and his information will be plugged into the chat for those of you um, that will want to reach out to Score as a resource to help 
with their business, whether they're starting to grow in the business. Up next, we have Brent Peacock. He's a director to the Florida Veterans Business Outreach Center. Brent, the mic is yours. Good morning, Natalie. Thank you. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, good. Thanks. We are part of the uh, Small Business Administration. Our purpose is to assist veterans, active duty military, National Guard and reservists, and those military connected personnel. We cover the entire state of Florida. There are 22 VBOCs nationwide, with another seven or eight scheduled to be added uh, within the next program year. We serve military members of all branches in Florida. Got many bases that cover the different uh, branches of military service. We provide services to all of those veterans and military spouses. There are African American veteran business owners that own businesses in most every sector of the economy. Here are some examples of some of those uh, nationwide, and we'll kind of narrow this down to some local presentations as well. One of the essential things that we do is teach a class to separating or retiring military members called Boots to Business. We teach these classes on 14 military installations located in Florida, all the way from Milton, all the way down to the Keys. We teach about 50 classes per year in person on military bases to give that uh, separating or retiring veteran or military spouse kind of a overview of what it takes to start a small business. And then we provide continuing education to them. They're eligible to take a six week online course called Revenue Readiness taught by Mississippi State University to every military member who completes the Boots to Business program, CONUS and OCONUS. So everybody in the world who completes the Boots to Business program gets to use the Revenue Readiness. It doesn't cost you anything and it does not use your military education benefits. Veterans teach or start businesses of all kind. Here's a video I'd like to share of one such veteran. So one comes in, you can tell that she has that military background. She has that drive, that motivation to make sure everything's correct and everything's done right all the time. I've never seen anyone more precise with how the business end of the restaurant goes. I'm Jalon Hall Johnson. I'm a military spouse. My husband is in the Marine Corps and we've been stationed here in Billings, Montana where we've opened the Sassy Biscuit Company. We were stationed in California. My husband received these new orders to Billings and usually where we move, the Department of Defense has a pro background. She has that drive, that motivation to make sure everything's correct and everything's done right all the time. I've never seen anyone more precise with how the business end of the restaurant goes. Jalon Hall Johnson. I'm a military spouse. My husband is in the Marine Corps and we've been stationed here in Billings, Montana, where we've opened the Sassy Biscuit Company. We were stationed in California. My husband received these new orders to Billings and usually where we move, the Department of Defense has a program for military spouses to assist with jobs, but that program wasn't available here in Montana. And so I really started considering the option of entrepreneurship. When we first met Jalan, she came to us with a great idea and some passion and drive and didn't quite know exactly how to execute. And so she approached our Veterans Business Outreach Center that is housed in the same facility as I am. And immediately we began working together to really help her take that idea, put it on paper and figure out what it would look like to make that work. Jalan's case is an example for any 
a service member or military spouse who's even thinking about owning a small business that the real key to success is reaching out. And immediately that began a path of helping her with the business plan, marketing, finding their location, access to capital, and all of those services that are available right here in our community. It's great to see an entrepreneur flourish. We want to make sure that the veteran community, spouses, active duty, reservists or National Guard members, we want to make sure that they understand that uh, the SBA's doors are always open. We want them to succeed because we know when they succeed, they're going to lift up our communities. Jalan is the epitome of the client you want to walk into your office. She sat at my desk and I can remember her looking me in the eye and saying, Dina, I am not going to fail. So it's really great to see how she's grown, what she's done for our community, creating an innovative, exciting place to go and enjoy what, what you would think is just a biscuit. It's so much more. It's one of the most positive kitchens that I've ever seen. One of the most positive restaurants in general. It's been so much fun. I mean, getting to know Jalan and getting to know the family. That's what we have here. We have a family here at Sassy Biscuit. I've learned so much through the military. When opening up this company, I, I took a lot of the things that I learned as a military spouse and brought those into my company. And I think as an entrepreneur, there's so much that you can add to your community, to your family. And, and I think that the SBA was really instrumental in the success of our business. I'd like to add that uh, African Americans have defended our country since 1778. The first Rhode Island Regiment, the first all black military unit in America, was assembled on August 29th, 1778. They fought in the Battle of Rhode Island on Aquidneck Island. We assist all military branches. We are one of 21 VBOCs. So no matter where you go in the country, because of your military service, your dedication to our nation, we are here to help you. One of the main things that we do is teach a course called Boost of Business, as I mentioned. Healthy Living Visiting Physicians LLC provides primary medical care, weight loss, infusion therapy, and hormone therapy. Dr. Marie Alziza and Brandon McDowell attended Boost of Business class. Brandon owns Gorilla Logistics LLC. It's a trucking company specializing in expediting hotshot, overdimensional loads, and equipment transport. Chef Demetrius Odds, owner of Topsy Turvy Cakes and Accessories LLC, bakes French macaroons, New York style cookies and cupcakes, as well as strawberry, red velvet, cookies and cream, confetti birthday cake, devil's food, chocolate, lemon, carrot, spice cakes, to name a few. Dion Riddle, owner of AMR Lash Bar, provides lash extensions and lash additions, lash adhesives, and tweezer collections, both D and Dion attended Boost of Business. I know I'm making myself hungry here with all the stuff that they cook, but they actually transitioned from military service to business ownership with the help of the VBOC and our resource partners. And they got their start by attending the Boost of Business class. We also provide assistance with certifications. We assist photographer Andrew Crutchley and Fountain Hayes with applying for SBA certifications. Crutchley's photographs have been featured in a few of the industry's top publications, such as Style Me Pretty, Overwhelmed Bride, Wedding Wire, and The Knot. Fountain Hayes is owner of Wide Scope Consulting and Contracting Services, LLC. They provide cybersecurity solutions using advanced and modern technologies for the U.S. government, U.S. military, as well as corporate partners. We also assist startups. The Florida LLC or VBOC assisted Alexis Lamar and Jose Kenda with startup. Alexis Lamar owns a taste of Lex. She's a personal chef and caterer. She actually started her business while on active duty at Eglin Air Force Base. Jose's company, PMD Ceramic Coatings and More, provides automotive engine cleaning, paint protection, paint restoration, and scratch removal services to both individual car owners and fleet services. We also work with helping our veteran African-American entrepreneurs with acquiring capital. Pamela Wilcox is owner 
of Gown and Garter Incorporated. She's an award-winning bridal shop, and 305 Pina Colada is a mobile business specializing in frozen, non-alcoholic beverages. The Florida Veterans Business Outreach Center has assisted both of these military spouses and Navy veterans with getting access to capital and getting a small business loan. We also assist with government contracting. The VBOC has assisted both Tina Johnson and Marco Brooks. Brooks Environmental Solutions provides wastewater treatment and disposal, sampling and lab testing, lab transport and relocation, and facility support. Knox Roman offers electrical, facility maintenance, and plumbing services, as well as industrial wastewater treatment and pump motors. We help them to win government contracts by helping them to navigate through the system of award management, learning how to identify their NAICS codes, write a capabilities brief, and get in contact with the right people in order to pursue government contracts, starting out with subcontracting and moving up to winning larger awards. We provide services to all veterans in the state of Florida. You start out by going to vboc.org, that's Victor Bravo Oscar Charlie.org, filling out an SBA 641. That's a request for counseling form. That lets you know that we don't charge you for anything that we do. We don't sell or share your information, and we don't refer you to anybody who we have a financial interest in. That way you know that you're working with somebody who has your back, you can trust us, and what it does for us is it lets you know, lets us know who you are, what kind of business you've started or want to start, and how we can assist you. We hope that you'll reach out to vboc.org with your veteran all small business and let us help you to be successful like the veterans I presented today. Again, we are the VBOC that covers all of Florida. There are 21 other offices, so no matter where you go in the country, there will be a VBOC to assist you. My name is Brenton Peacock. I can be reached at bpeacock at gulfcoast.edu. I'll put that in the chat later. And you can call me at 800-542-7232. That'll be in the chat later. But the first step is to register for our assistance at vboc.org. We look forward to help you with your veteran-owned small business. And Natalie, I'll turn the program back over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Brent, for that great presentation and for also sharing those true live small business owners that receive support by way of the Florida Veterans Business Outreach Center. So those individuals that are military connected can truly, you know, see the information and the help that we provide to those individuals that are military connected, including our spouses. So up next, we have Mike Chung, business consultant with the Small Business Development Center, who's also going to provide you with a presentation on, on how SBDC can assist with starting or growing your small business. Take it away, Mike. Thanks, Natalie, and thanks everyone for taking time out from your busy schedule to be with us here today to become more knowledgeable on how you can grow or start and grow your company and take it to the next level so that you can have a successful exit. Um, just a little bit of background information on myself. I myself am a military veteran, Air Force veteran, who happened to have started a business in 1993 right after the mili uh, military drawdown after the first Gulf War. And my business was eligible to be classified as a black, Asian, veteran owned small business. However, at that time, I didn't know of all the resources that the SBA provided, even though the SBA was who provided the funding for my business. I only knew of the SBA as a source of capital because of my banker. And it's because of my experience why I decided to become involved with the Small Business Development Center so that I can help other folks like myself not make mistakes that I made so that you can be more profitable quickly and even more profitable than without if you didn't have the resources. Because in my, in my case, um, I broke even a little longer than I thought. I could have been more profitable if I had taken advantage of the resources the SBA provided. And I also would not have left a lot of money on the table when I exited my company. So hopefully I can talk to you a little bit today about all these resources that we provide 
to help make sure that you can uh, maximize the uh, wealth generation that this business will create for you. So, the uh, why is it not advancing, Natalie? There we go. All right, can everybody see my screen okay? So, the Small Business Development Center is a network of small business development centers across the country, located in every state and territory. And in the state of Florida, we're branded as a Florida SBDC. And we are on the Florida statute, the principal provider for small business assistance in the state. We partner with over 100 partners in economic development business, SBA, DLA, that funds our PTAC program. The state of Florida provides funding, and that's who helps pay the bill with the SBA. And our program is delivered statewide and, and across the country through the state, utilizing the state university system. We also partner with other organizations, which, as I said, economic development organizations, like the chambers of commerce, uh, local governments, and uh, EDCs. According to the Department of Labor, Bureau of Labor Statistics, 90% of businesses, sorry, 90% of business failures are due to three reasons, lack of knowledge, lack of experience, and lack of capital. Well, in 2021, we did a survey of our clients, and they also provided us with that same information. So according to our clients, 28% shows that capital access is the main challenge for them. And of course, market growth, strategic planning, technology and operation management, those all fall under experience and knowledge. With that information then, who are these businesses that provided that information? Well, our clients are individuals who have an idea, want to start a business, individuals who have already started, but maybe in business less than three years, we call those our startup businesses. And then we also have what we call our small and medium sized businesses, those who have been in business three years or more and employ five or more, you know, five or more employees. Our core client is the startup businesses and the SMEs. Now, I don't want you to think that we don't work with free ventures. We do. It's just that because of the nature of our service, a lot of a lot of our expertise is being uh, used by folks already in business. What services do we provide to our customers? Well, we do four things. We provide consulting, management and training, workshops, events, and we provide them access to information that they could not otherwise afford or know that was out there that they, that they could utilize. And the fourth thing we do is we have specialized programs for more sophisticated clients. In the area of business consulting, the type of consulting you get is going to be dependent on where you are in your stage of business or the life cycle of your business. So if you're a pre-venture, we will spend a lot of time advising you on whether or not you have a good you know, your business, your idea makes will make a good business. But sometimes an idea just won't make money. And, you know, and if that's the case, we want you to know so that, like Brent said earlier, you can make that go no go decision very early before you, you know, start spending a lot of your hard earned money. If you're in the startup phase, we would be helping you in, in implementing that business plan that we help you create in, in the pre venture phase. You'd have also needed to access capital. You're also going to need help with marketing because you have, because at that point, as a, as a, uh, Prevent as a pre venture or startup business, sorry, market penetration is the name of the game. So sales is important. Okay? Then once you grow and become an SME, you may be at that point where you need to get that second round of financing so that you can expand and put in place the assets that you need to get you to the next level. In the area of specialized services, we have companies who are looking to go after new markets in foreign, in foreign countries with, in, with putting in place an international trade plan. 
we partner with the state of Florida, Enterprise Florida, that provides the funding to prepare a full-blown export marketing plan for our clients, where we then in turn will give them an order of ranked order of priority of countries they should enter. As a bonus, companies that do an export marketing plan with us get to go on a trade mission to one of those countries, one of those five countries that we recommended, and they then meet with members of US commercial services in those foreign countries who have arranged for business meetings with vetted prospective customers or partners in those foreign, in the foreign country. Another area, especially in recent years when we had the economic downturn to COVID, a lot of companies were trying to get into government contracting. So they were looking up, looking at a new type of customer. Under our PTAC program, Performance Technical Assistance, we help companies get registered, certified, whether it be a small disadvantaged business, a black owned business, a woman owned, hub zoned, or service to save a veteran owned or veteran owned small business, so that you can go after the 23% set aside that the federal government spends with small businesses. As a matter of fact, under the current administration, that number is at least 30% because the minority business component or disadvantaged business is not 12% instead of 5%. For viable companies who want to accelerate their growth, we help them with preparing their plan to make that happen, which involves a marketing plan, financial plan, and an exit plan. As I mentioned before, if you're trying to access capital, we will actually put together, help you put together the loan package and make recommendations as to which bank can best serve your needs. Because we have a relationship with pretty much all of the SBA approved lenders. In Florida, there's something called hurricanes that occur every year. And the SBDC is part of the state emergency response team. And we get activated whenever there is a disaster and the governor de declares a, a disaster. And we go into the field and help folks put together the paperwork that they need to uh, apply for uh, their business loans while they're waiting on their insurance claims. The business continu continuation uh, service is also designed to help companies put in place what we call a COOP plan, a continuity of operations plan, so that you can be prepared before a disaster, minimize the impact of a disaster. But if you are impacted, we want you to get back up and running in business as quickly as possible. Good. These are some of the tools that we use with our clients. Uh, Reference USA, which is all, which is now called Reference Solutions, helps helps our clients get information on their competition and their target customers. Ibis World provides you with information on your industry, and Bizminer provides you with financial benchmarks for your industry. So that way, we know that you're, as a business owner, you are well prepared in knowing what's happening in your industry, what's projected to happen in the future. Also, who your target customers are, how they spend, where they're located, and also where your competitors are located. And we also want to make sure that you are properly benchmarked in terms of uh, your cost, sales, and profit margins, so that you're maximizing your profitability. One of the so uh, services that we provide is financial analysis and cash flow management. And we use that utilizing these uh, two tools, Profit Sense and Profit Mastery. As I mentioned, marketing is one of the things that, a, especially a growing company, needs to, uh, well, every company needs to be involved in marketing at all times. And in today's environment, if you don't have a website and an online presence, you are not competitive. And so the SBDC provides a tool called SEMrush which helps our clients with their SEO, search engine optimization. And some of the things we can do is help them understand how the, their website is functioning. How does it compare to your competitors? 
what keywords are driving traffic to your website as well as to your customers and also for your type of business. And are you using the right keywords? The Avention program is one that we use to help customers put together a sales plan. Because as I said, in the early stages of a business, sales is a lifeblood. Because you've got to get money coming in as quickly as possible but before you run out of money. Turbocharge Your Team is a tool that we help business owners utilize to make sure that they're hiring the right people or placing the right people to perform the right tasks with their company. This is very similar to our uh, Myers-Briggs, if any of you are familiar with that. So it's basically placing people in positions where they are most likely to succeed based on their behavioral tendencies. Thanks. Bid match. We talked about government contracting. Government contracting can be very overwhelming, especially to new companies with, without any experience in the government contracting arena. We're talking, you know, rules and regulations that you have to follow, depending on whether you're federal, state, local, or educational. And with our bid match program, we are able to provide our customers access to over 1,200 databases so they can get information on opportunities that are available for that for their type of company and for their services. So they're not out there trying to, to find opportunities at all the, all the different platforms for the different states, counties, local governments, and uh, educational institutions. So we, we, uh, we can combine all of that on the one platform. And the biggest benefit is it gives our customers better use of their time. As I mentioned earlier, um, in disaster preparedness, uh, disaster, disaster preparedness is one of the things that we do. And I don't know, some of you may have seen this vehicle. We have two of them in your community, especially if you are in on, online now from the South, South Florida, Southwest Florida area. But these are our mobile units that we deploy whenever a disaster is declared. And we actually set up shop with the SBA at the disaster centers. And through the use of satellite communication, we actually help you process your paperwork if you're trying to go after an EIDL loan or you need to uh, get help with recovering from the disaster. Okay. So the SBDC is all about creating better Florida by helping our businesses grow. And by doing that, they grow revenues. Hopefully they're more profitable and will create jobs because we want them to contribute to the economic prosperity of their local community. Now, this is a snapshot of the types of, of, of our customers. As you can see, of the 24, over 24,000 customers that we saw in 2021, hoping my screen will come back. Okay, but I'm just going to go I'll go ahead. But that's that that chart was supposed to show that the breakdown in terms of how much what percentage of our customers were uh, women, minorities, and veteran-owned businesses and their economic um, accomplishments. One of the great things of this country is that you have the ability to be in business for yourself, but not by yourself. I'll give you a quotation you know, from you know, Steve, Steve Jobs. He says, great things in business are never done by one person. They're done by a team of people. Another business leader, the co-founders of LinkedIn, he says, no matter how brilliant your strategy is, if you're playing a solo game, you'll always lose out to a team. So. 
those two individuals clearly articulate that you're in business for yourself, but not by yourself. So one of the things you want as a minority business owner is to surround yourself with, with, a, with, with a team. We call it an entourage. And that entourage includes your bail team, banker, attorney, insurance agent, lawyer, as well as your advisors, your score advisor, your SBDC advisor, your VBOC, your woman business center, and all these different resources and organizations that are out there to help you succeed. Make sure you take advantage of their, of, of their, of their resources. One of the questions we get asked all the time is, can we recommend a banker, an attorney, an insurance agent, or a lawyer? And in order to prevent any conflict of interest, we have created what's called a small business resource network, which is a network of all these different uh, business professionals, and they're vetted every year. And so this is a network as a customer you can access to identify and choose a banker, an accountant, an insurance agent, a lawyer, or any other professional service provider that your business may need. So, if you're interested in growing sales, growing profits, contributing to the economic prosperity of your community, government contracting, international trade, please contact your local SBDC office, where I say we're located across the state, and We'll be happy to see our services at no cost to you and it's confidential. I'll turn it back over to you, Natalie. Um, I can send you my slides if you want to include um, to the viewership, because I do have some other information on there that they can, you know, they can see. I have information in terms of um, other non-government resources that is available to them, as well as uh, Lending, lend, lending information, which I know you're going to be talking about tomorrow. Okay, great, and thank you. Thanks, Mike, for sharing that information about the Small Business Development Center. So um, before I introduce the last presenter, I just want to share that I know during the opening remarks, our regional administrator mentioned that SBA have the four resource partners that we partly fund. So this afternoon, you guys heard from SCORE, the Veterans Business Outreach Center, and the Small Business Development Center. Unfortunately, the fourth SBA resource partner, the Women's Business Center, was not involved in this event. But those are the four SBA resource partners, SCORE, the Veterans Business Outreach Center, Small Business Development Center, and the Women's Business Center. So I just, I didn't want to confuse anyone. And the last speaker is with a resource that's not a um, resource partner through SBA. We have a work relationship. We collaborate in events to help us, to help our small business communities. Um, because a lot of times SBA, we have to align ourselves with outside community leaders and stakeholders to help us to get the word out. So unfortunately we can't do it by ourselves. So I am going to introduce you to our last speaker, who is Edward Gaston. He's with Wealth Watchers. And I'm going to turn it over to Ed, but I want to say this. For those of you that want to receive a copy of the recorder, remember, you did not register. So that means that I did not capture any of your information. If anyone wants to receive the copy of this today's presentation, you have to either email me at n-a-t-a-l-i-e dot h-a-l-l at s-b-a dot gov or call me directly. My direct line is area code 904-443-1902. I will plug that in the chat. But for those of you that are called in, um, you can reach me directly at, again, area code 904-443-1902 to get a copy of today's presentation. So with that being said, I wanna turn it over to Ed Gaston so he can give you this wonderful information about Wealth Watchers and how they can assist you with starting or growing your business and also help you to understand your credit. So with that being said, I'm gonna turn it over to you, Ed. 
Okay, thank you, Natalie. And I want to make certain I'm going to do a quick mic check. Can everybody hear me okay? Can you hear me okay, hear Natalie? Yes, All sir. All right. Okay. So, you know, I really appreciate being here today. Um, I can share a screen if that's available. Uh, let's see here. Up a right hand corner. Share up arrow. I see it. Okay. All right, can you see that okay? Um, uh, it's okay, yes, I see it. Okay, all right. Now, here's the beautiful thing about Wealth Watchers. We're a nonprofit. We're HUD certified, so we kind of wear two different hats. Not only are we able to assist you when it comes to basic finances, we're also able to assist you when it comes to small business. Now, so that we understand real clear, a nonprofit, we utilize, we leverage, we connect the dots, we bring in dollars to support our mission, and then we use those dollars to educate you on those things that everyone may not be in a position to do. One of the things that I know that we are here, we have a disclaimer here. We have a motto here. We're here to tell you what you need to know. It may not always be what you want to hear, but we pray that it is. So now as that relates to small business, when we started some years ago, we would educate people about their financials, how to do projections, even their ideas. And then we ran into a challenge. After we got them to that point, we really had no place to send them for access to capital. In other words, we couldn't help them to get a loan. Either the bank was not looking to do loans that small or their financials were not excellent. So what did Wealth Watchers do? We created a micro loan program, but we didn't just stop there. You know, with our micro loan program, we can lend up to $50,000 and our focus is in rural areas. But we also created partnerships with other lenders like the BBIF, Self-Help Credit Union. What we're looking to do at Wealth Watchers, you've heard all this great information today. What we like to do is be that next step for you to let you know you contact us, we get you started, we answer the questions you may not feel comfortable with talking to a bank about immediately, and then we give you the background information so that you can consistently access it as you grow your idea, start your business, expand your business and kick butt. Okay. So now with that said, one of the things Natalie knows that, that I'm going to always do because as Natalie stated, we don't know what area or what level you're coming in from. So for us, we like to be here. We're on the ground with you. So I will put my phone number in the chat for those that are already registered. And for those that are not, I hope you can take this down. It'll be on the recording, but the number you can reach out to by text or calling, ideally by text, is 904-554-6873. 904-554-6873. Now, we're going to talk about one other thing that I know that you all are very interested in, and that's a microloan. What exactly is a microloan? Well, we have a ton of businesses, small businesses, might as well call them micro business, that need anywhere from fifty to five thousand dollars, or five thousand dollars to fifty thousand dollars. When you get over the fifty thousand dollar range, that's when we start referring you to our lending partners. But let's talk about that zero to fifty. The beautiful thing about a micro loan is that you don't have to have excellent credit. We know that that's one of the main things that that people are concerned about. But you do need to have a business that can cash flow. At no level of business ownership do we want you to treat it as a hobby. We do want you to approach every step of the way as saying, I'm in business to do business and to make a profit. And that's the conversations we have with you immediately following receiving your application. Now, 
as with most other people on this call, we do provide technical assistance. We give you the, the, the real information you need to make the right decisions. And our services are free and confidential. That's right, free and confidential. For us, it's because of our several banking funders. They support us because they support our mission. And you have to think about that. A bank is willing to support an organization like us because they want to make more loans. They want to make more quality loans. And if you're going through us to test your business, to ensure that it works well, then you have a better chance at when the time comes for you to step up, you're able to be approved without a problem, without a problem. Now, to tell you how real this process is, I had to take a, a, a extra step here. Yes, that's true. I made one of the businesses mm -hmm. who support attend this, this workshop. One of our businesses is actually on the line. And I can tell you, Nicole Mobley, yes, she, she is a trucker of TN, TNN Express. And she went through our entire program. Now, we're here to tell you that the process works if you put in the work, but it's going to be pretty easy for you because it's your business. The other thing about that is that at the end, when we're done massaging and, and making certain that you meet the right thresholds, then we like to take that time and make certain that your business can actually support your household. So as a HUD certified counseling agency, we also, not only do we look at your business, we look at the health of your household. We ensure that your business can actually support your household. Only then do we give you that green light. Uh, one thing that we do with the SBA right now as a partner, is an excellent partnership, is that uh, we do credit check Tuesdays. We have a virtual online class where we invite businesses existing and people with great ideas to our classes so that we can talk to them about the reality of personal credit. A lot of people have been misled to believe that personal credit, uh, you don't need that when you're looking at a business. You most absolutely do. And I do appreciate my, my, my fellow peers here today that understand that they have to take a moment to assist a small business owner with improving their credit prior to giving them the green light to rock and roll. So now I do want to talk more about the next steps. When you utilize our service, we consider ourselves to be boots on the ground at Wealth Watchers. So we are going to get a full application on you. It's not just hearing your business idea, but as I stated, it's reviewing your household situation, your stability, and addressing the cash flow of your business, not based on your heart, but based on the actual market conditions. We like to take the extra time to make certain that your idea actually can fly. Now, nothing is guaranteed. We know that. I had a business that we approved prior to COVID. Excellent business plan, cash flow without a problem. It was an entertainment vehicle. And it would just go from school to school. You know, it would, would set up at events and the cash flow was beautiful. But then what happened? COVID. COVID happened. So we understand that things, financial hardships can, can occur. When that is there, that is another beautiful thing about being in our micro loan program. We stay in contact with you. So when hiccups happen, we work with you through those hiccups. Now, this is not something that a major bank is going to do because quite honestly, it's just not in their best interest profit wise. But that is the niche market for us. And one thing that I always advocate for, the step above Wealth 